Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and welcome back to part three of our AK Patterns Kimberly Sew Along. So today I am going to be showing you how to, uh, the pattern is drafted for a v-neck so I'm going to show you how to change um, that neckline if you would like to have a scoop line, just for, or scoop line, a scoop neckline just for something different. Um, so I'm going to show you that and then we are going to uh, put sleeves in this bodice whereas last week we did a sleeveless bodice so we'll be fully lining this one as well. Um, um, not fully. We're fully lining the bodice. I'm not lining the sleeves. Um, but I'm going to show you the differences there and how to line the bodice. Um, again, this pattern comes with um, facings. And so we have uh, switched those out for lining. Um, anyway, we'll be constructing the bodice today. And I'm also putting a s interfacing uh, down the center back um, seam. The center back. Center back. <laughs> It's cut in the back. It's still un, unsewn after after today. But I just want to talk, and I talked about it a little bit, but I use this So Keezy um, Knits Day Tape. It's interfacing. It's a uh, one and a quarter inches wide. It's just, it's fusible. It's just easy. I use them for my zippers all the time. So um, I just kind of wanted to talk a little bit about that, and I will have a link uh, to that down in the description box below of what I normally use. But... Um, Oh, hello, partner. <laughs> but that does get fused at the ooh, end of this video in center back, and it also needs to be um, fused to the center back of the skirt pieces, but only from the top of the skirt until about an inch below where the zipper stops and there's a notch where your zipper should stop. Um, anyway, that's all we've got for today. As always, leave any questions you've got down in the comments below. And next week we will be putting the skirt, um, from here on out, both dresses are the same. So we'll be putting the skirt onto the dress and then uh, finishing everything up, putting a zipper in, finishing hems. And then I will have uh, both dresses on show to show you what those ended up looking like. Okay, I hope you guys have a wonderful Sunday and I will see you next time. Bye. Okay. So I want to apologize that this did not get into last week's video. Um, I got a phone call while I was filming it and totally forgot that the uh, filming turns off, the video uh, recording turns off when that happens and I kept going and did the whole bodice and then didn't realize till I went back to edit. So <laughs> take two. All right, so if you're wanting to do a scoop neck bodice on um, with this dress as opposed to the V-neck, I'm going to show you how to do that now because um, I am making a V-neck bodice dress without sleeves and a scoop neck bodice dress with sleeves. So I've traced off the bodice. Obviously it's got the uh, V neck on this um, traced off bodice. Have my darts in, my grain line, everything. So this is the Kimberly bodice as is, as, as drafted with my personal um, adjustments made to it. So that's the other thing. You wanna make your adjustments first so that you're only having to um, make this neckline adjustment. You know, you don't wanna have to do all your adjustments twice on the bodice. So all my adjustments have been made on my v-neck bodice and now this is how I'm going to do my scoop neck bodice. So what I need to do, um, we're changing the v to a scoop. Now I want to raise the neckline. The reason for this is that a scoop neckline tends to come out just a little bit more and I don't want it you know, coming out and then the same depth as a v-neck. It just gets a little too um, cleavagey for me, <laughs> which is a very easy thing to do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna raise this neckline by an inch and a half. So I'm just going straight off the center front. My center front line's not very straight. I was freehanding that. Um, an inch and a half. So here is my new point. This is an inch and a half up from where it was before. Next, if you don't have one of these in your, um, this is a hip curve. Um, it's a slash, what is it? Styling design ruler, but a French curve basically. So it's got the hip curve down here and then the armhole curve kind of stuff up here. This is brilliant for all of that kind of um, pattern drafting if you're wanting to make new lines. Because now all we're gonna do is we wanna go known points. So this is a known point, and then this point right here is a known point, and you can tell that because this is where the seam allowance is trued up. See how it kind of goes back um, angled a little bit? It's because when this gets full down, so when you're pressing your seam allowance open, that seam allowance will stay flush with the actual neckline. So those are our known points. So basically all we are doing, also, when you're doing any kind of a rounded neckline, you've got to be straight at center front. Otherwise, when you cut it out, it will have a V basically in it. So I wanna go straight for at least a half of an inch, five eighths of an inch, quarter of an inch, somewhere. So just draw a line. So you have a square or a right angle right there. Um, we may not go that far, but it helps with the blending. So now we just wanna find a good, 
um, let me pull this down a little bit, make sure we're in frame. A good look and curve. And I think right there is gonna do it for me. So now I'm just drawing that in. And there we have it. So this green line is my new neckline. So now I can just go in and cut this out. So I'll cut my 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Um, that may need to be trued again. You may want to draw in your seam allowance and true that up. more severe of a jaunt there just because it comes in more and there you have it it's a very very easy adjustment to make so then you can cut this out and then um, cut out your bodice per normal and there you have it that is a scoop neck make sure you write on your pattern all the details, AK patterns. This is the Kimberly scoop neck front. This gets cut on the fold, so you're gonna cut one on fold. You can write your size, the date, anything else on there, but make sure so you don't get confused for later on down the road. But there you have it, there is your Kimberly scoop neck bodice. Very easy adjustment to make. Okay, so today we are conquering, obviously, the scoop neck bodice. So let's go over the pieces that we need. So you need your back bodice, which is, um, you know, it's the same as what the pattern uh, comes to. So I've marked my dart points and uh, clipped all my notches and I've cut this out of fashion fabric and out of my lining fabric. And again, on this one, this version, I'm using a really lightweight linen because um, this is a linen rayon blend for the fashion fabric. Um, so it has a little bit of structure, but it's nice and lightweight and it'll help um, be very breathable with the linen rayon um, fashion fabric as well. Okay, so we've got the back bodice piece. And then we've got the front bodice piece. This is the new drafted piece where we redrafted our neckline. So we've got that in fashion fabric and that also cut out in our lining fabric. Darts are marked, um, all notches clipped. Then you should have four pocket pieces. Um, and I showed in the last week's video and I should have popped a link of that link of that video at the beginning of this one. Um, so you can go back and check, but I showed you how I kind of redrafted the pocket piece because I like my pocket pieces to go up into my waistband. Um, we'll be covering that more. Um, well, we'll be sewing it next week. Um, but I do show you how, you know, just a quick little drafting. I just basically added this top part so that it connects into the waistband. Um, but I did show that last week, but you need four of those pocket pieces. This is all very similar from here on out. Um, two back skirt pieces, two, one front skirt piece on the fold. Um, I'm not doing the hem band on either of these now because I didn't have enough fabric. Um, and base, the basic, basically the reason I was doing this dress was I could show you how to do a full at a lining where there isn't draft, one drafted and both a bodice with sleeves and a bodice without sleeves. So I didn't think that the hem band was that big of a deal. Um, and I like this skirt a lot where it hits me without the hem band. So you need your skirt pieces. And then you're going to need your two sleeve pieces. I am making the short sleeve version of this pattern. Um, and I've done my petite adjustment on that. And I showed that video uh, this past Wednesday. So all of my pieces are ready to go. So for today's video, we just need, move that over there. We need your sleeve pieces, your two sleeves, your two fronts, and your four backs. Because um, we've got, you know, the front and lining and regular and same with our backs. So four, whoopsie, let me hit that. 
set my sleeves aside for a minute and get rid of all these pattern pieces. So first things first, we want to sew our darts. So I'm going to sew my two, my dart in each back piece. I'm going to sew my two front darts and my two, or my two front waist darts and my two front side darts. And I'm going to do the same thing in the lining pieces as well. So, so all of your darts, um, and then, and I'll take you over to the machine and while we're doing this, and then we're going to attach our front and backs, both for our lining and for our, our fashion fabric. We're going to attach those right sides together at the shoulder seams and then press those open. So those are our first steps. So the darts um, for the bodice and also for the bodice lining and then attach backs to fronts at the shoulder seams. Um, there were, so we're gonna have two tops basically, um, a lining attached to the shoulder seams and then the bodice attached to the shoulder seams. Seams pressed open. So let's go over to the sewing machine and take care of that and then we will uh, go from there. Okay. So once you've got, um, I didn't do any detail shots of this because I had already, I mean, this is the same steps that I did last week with the V-neck bodice. Um, so now you should have your bodice, um, your line, this is my lining, um, but your lining all sewn with the darts and attached to the shoulder seams, shoulder seams pressed open, and then the same bodice and lining. So now what we are going to do is lay these together, right sides together. And we're gonna match up our shoulder seams. And we're just gonna pin at the shoulder seams. I like to just pin at the shoulder, a few you know key points. The shoulder seams, I've marked center front here. So I will go ahead and mark that. And then the same with this shoulder seam over here. And if you watched last week, um, this neckline is gonna be done basically the same way, except this is obviously not a V, it's a scoop. So what we're going to do is um, we are going to start and stop about two inches away from center back. So I will put a pin right about here and that will be where I stop sewing. And when I did the V-neck version, I sewed with the um, silk on the bottom because it was the slinkier fabric. But because there's some rayon in my fashion fabric, I'm actually going to sew this with the rayon on the bottom um, because my lining fabric is a 100% linen. But yeah, I'm going to start and stop two inches from the back and I will sew all the way around and then stop about two inches away because we have to have room for the, um, for the zipper in. So that will get finished up actually at the very end of the dress. So um, I'm going to go to the machine. I will take you guys with me because uh, we are going to stitch and then understitch. And I also wanted to, to make a quick comment. Um, I had some questions about interfacing. And you know, if we were sewing this, this pattern as is, we would be using a facing and we would interface that facing, which is correct. And they asked why you don't do that with a lining. Well, with an interfacing, because it's only a couple inches of fabric, if you didn't interface that, by the time you had washed or even worn it, it would just be a crinkled mess of fabric um, balled up right underneath your neckline. It would look awful. So you would interface the um, facings in order to keep them taut. Now with a lining, that gets sewn in at, the, at your um, uh, waist seam. And so we don't have that issue of it balling up. It's a much bigger piece of fabric and it gets uh, anchored in so many places that we don't have an issue of it moving at all. Now, if you are worried about the neckline um, becoming misshapen, you can definitely stay stitch and you could definitely do a thin little piece of uh, stay tape, uh, like a fusible stay tape, a knit stay tape. Those tend to go around the corners or the curves a little bit better. But keep in mind that um, that could have show through on the right side of the fabric. You could see that stay tape, you know, a line from the other side, depending on how heavy your fabric is. So do keep that in mind. But also remember, I mean, I'm using linens here, which are pretty stable. Um, even though this does have a little bit of rayon in it, it does have quite a bit of linen. But you are sewing the neckline twice. So you're sewing it once to attach the lining to the bodice, and then you're going to sew it again when you understitch it. And that really keeps that neckline pretty secure as far as um, shifting out of place. 
So definitely stay stitch. I didn't here, but you could definitely do that, um, especially if you're using a rayon. Um, I would definitely stay stitch. Um, and technically you should stay stitch a neckline anyway. Um, I'm just skipping a few, skipping a corner here. <laughs> but anyway, I just wanted to put that out there. So now I'm gonna go to the sewing machine and we are going to do our neckline. All right, so we're gonna sew the neckline. Um, I'm gonna sew with my Fashion Fabric Against the Feed Dogs because I mentioned it does have some rayon in it, so it's a little bit shiftier than the um, lining fabric that's 100% linen. Not a lot, but a little bit. Uh, whoops. And then sometimes we like to accidentally hit our foot pedal and unthread our machine. Okay, so I'm starting with my Fashion Fabric Against the Feed Dogs, but most of the time your lining is your shiftier fabric, um, whether that be a Bimberg or a Silk or whatever. Um, so most of the time you do want to sew with your lining against the feed dogs. Um, it just helps feed that through a little bit better, but um, again, I'm going to sew with my fashion fabric down on this one. And I'm starting um, two inches away from center back, at least two and a half to two and a half, because our zipper is going to go in eventually at the very end of all this. Um, so we need to leave that gap. So I'll start about two, two and a half inches away from center back, and I'll finish about that same distance away from center back. My seam allowances are five eighths of an inch. So I'm just gonna go around the neckline. Okay, once we have those two layers sewn together, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna trim my seam allowance down to about half, but I'm not, I'm gonna be careful here at the end. I'm gonna kind of ease my way. We wanna leave as much of that seam allowance there um, where we still need to sew. So kind of ease my way down. All right, once we have trimmed that seam allowance down, you can kind of see, I'm gonna go through, um, on the V-neck version, I just kind of clipped the V-neck and then um, a little bit around the back neckline, but because we have a scoop neck, we need to clip pretty much this entire neckline. So I'm gonna start here at the back and I'm just gonna clip, oh, every three quarters of an inch or so through the entire um, neckline and I'm clipping through the seam allowance and I'm clipping to that stitching line but not through it. All right, now once we've clipped into our seam allowance, you can see where I've done that, we're going to separate our bodice from our lining and we're going to understitch. And what we're going to do, and I will pull you in front of the um, camera, or pull you in front of the machine to actually show you what I'm doing for understitching. But, um, you know, we stopped sewing right here. This is center back right here, and we've stopped sewing here. We don't want to start understitching right at this point. That's going to make it really hard to finish up this seam line when we go to put the zipper in. So we want to start understitching about an inch away from where we stopped attaching and sewing this. Everything will still turn fine, um, but we want to start about an inch away. Um, again, we've pulled the bodice away, or the lining away from the bodice, and we're going to be pushing the seam allowance underneath toward the lining. So we're actually going to stitch on the lining side, and we are stitching the seam allowance to the lining, basically, and starting an inch away from that. So let me put you in front of the machine, and we will do this together. All right, so now we're in front of the machine. We have pulled these two layers apart. I am, this is where we stopped sewing. So again, I'm gonna go about an inch in. My thighs can literally not get any bigger because they just, this one just fits perfectly where the tripod needs to go. All right, so I'm going to start about an inch from where I quit sewing. Sewing really close to that seam line there, but making sure that my seam allowance is pushed towards the um, lining. So I'm definitely feeling for that as I go. So let's understitch. Okay, and then I stopped about an inch away from where I've stopped um, stitching, so you can see. So now we are all understitched. So let's go to the next step. All right, so now that we have our neckline all sewn and understitched, I'm gonna go and press it 
and I just want that, I'm gonna press it with the lining up so that just a little bit of that fashion fabric comes onto the bottom to the back side. That way we know that the lining is not peeking out from the front. So I'm gonna go give that a really good press and then we're gonna come back and insert our sleeves flat. All right, so once I have a beautiful neckline finished here, beautiful scoop neckline. We're going to insert the sleeves. Now, we are just going to insert the sleeves into the fashion fabric, so you wanna kind of like um, push your lining fabric out of the way. I'm gonna show you two different ways, um, a very nice way to finish off the inside with your lining and then just the way that I normally do it. <laughs> so, um, I like, I just really, you can do this and at this point you could go ahead and sew up your um, uh, side seams and then just do, you know, sew up the side seam of the bodice and then sew up the side seam of the sleeve um, and then just kind of pin the armholes together and then insert your sleeve in the round. But I just really like inserting my sleeves flat whenever possible. I just find it much easier to ease and I just get better results, I think. Um, I don't ever do that with a jacket where you really need a lot of really pretty ease built in, but I do do it anytime I can in blouses, dresses, um, shirts, that kind of thing. So I'm going to push the lining out of the way and I'm just working with the um, main fabric. And I'm going to pin my sleeve, and if you watched last month's sew along, that's wrong side, um, I did this the same method with that dress. Okay, set that sleeve out of the way. So I'm just gonna match the top of the sleeve to the shoulder seam, where I've got that top of the sleeve notch. And then I'm gonna match Oops, that is the wrong sleeve. <laughs> Inevitable. Thought that was one notch, it's two. Okay, hold on. Okay, let's try that again. All right, we're going to pin the top of the sleeve cap to the shoulder sleeve seam, and then we're gonna mar match our uh, single notch for the front of the dress. and then we will match our back. Okay, now I'm gonna sew this with the sleeve against the feed dogs. So this is my bodice up and the sleeve is gonna be against the feed dogs. And I'll pull you in front of the machine so you can see what I'm doing and how I kind of ease that with my fingers as I sew. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to attach uh, both sleeves, but again, I'll show you how I do one sleeve here. Okay, before we insert our sleeve, I had to go back and unpick some stuff that I'm going to um, edit out now. <laughs> but make sure you finish off your um, underarm seams of your sleeves on both sides, whether that's surging, zigzagging, however you're gonna do it. Make sure you finish those off now. And then before I show you how I insert my sleeve flat, I'm not doing this when I when I show you the footage, but just make sure you leave about an inch and a half unsewn. So when we are sewing the sleeve to the top, instead of starting at the underarm seam or the side seam, start about an inch, inch and a half back. We need those free, and I will show you that in a minute. Okay, so now I'm going to let you go to the footage of me inserting the sleeve. All right. So here we have, this is my sleeve here on the bottom and my bodice on the top. So I'm just going to match up my raw edges. Our seam allowances are five eighths of an inch or one and a half centimeters. But again, I, my hand is right here in between the sleeve and the um, bodice with the bodice on top. So I'm gonna start at the edge that out of the way so you can see and we're going to sew in right here at the underarm seam it usually sews you know pretty much one to one ratio you're usually pretty good till you get to the um, notch okay pull that pin out all right now let me try and see if you can see that you can see here that we have quite a bit more sleeve because now we're sewing a concave and a convex curve together. So you see how that's sticking out at that point? 
So what I'm going to do is stick my hand in between those layers, hello, and I'm taking my fingers and I'm pulling that back. Now you want to be careful and you don't want to accidentally pinch anything. So I'm just going to pull that back to where my um, raw edges are even again, or pretty close to even. We're at the top notch. I'm going to do the same thing. You can see there's our bodice, there's our sleeve. So we're going to tuck that in. Hold on, I got a lot of pull here. My bodice is falling off the table. Once I get to this second or the front notch, then we can just kind of ease it on through. Um, then we come back here and check. And if you do have any puckers, which actually I caught a pucker right there, all you need to do, I don't think that's a pucker, you don't have to unpick the whole sleeve. Just unpick a little bit. And then if you want, you can actually flip it over since pretty much everything's eased except for that little section. Sometimes it's easier to go back and... Oops! See, I was trying to sew through the viewfinder and I totally caught a part of the dress. There we go. Okay, so now, now you can just start sewing where you, you know, maybe like an inch back and sew over your previous line. to do through the viewfinder. Okay. Yeah. Those will press out. Okay. And there you have it. Okay, so I'm just going to go do that to the second sleeve. Um, I'll do that off camera. And then we will come back and do up our side seams real quick. Okay, so once your sleeve is in, all nice and sewn in there, um, again, we've got, we have not sewn the sleeve completely to the bodice yet. We have about an inch and a half. There's probably about two inches actually there. Unsewn. And that's what we want. So now what we're going to do um, is right sides together. We are going to sew our underarm seam on both sides. I'm just going to do it on one side here, but obviously on both sides. So I'm going to sew 5 eighths of an inch, just the underarm seam of the sleeve. Okay, now we'll want to go light balance. <laughs> and those get pressed open. And then we've got a hole here. So now we're going to go sew all of our side seams together. And there will be a hole um, between the sleeve and the side seam, and that's okay. So we're going to sew the side seams of both of our um, 
front bodices and also the lining and those don't have a sleeve in it actually and that's okay again that there's a big hole we're going to fix that in a minute so go ahead and sew all four of your side seams um, at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and then go ahead and press those open Okay, again, I had to unpick a lot, so my stuff's already pressed. <laughs> All right, so now we have this hole here where our underarm connects to our side seam. So I'm gonna talk you through a couple ways that you can do this. At this point, you can go ahead, um, and again, you could totally have inserted your sleeve in the round, and that's absolutely fine, and then this is kind of null and void. I just really like inserting my sleeves flat whenever possible. I just like the results a little better. But at this point, you could either go ahead, and I've matched my underarm seam and my side seam, and then just finish sewing the sleeve to the... Um, basically in the round, but finish sewing the, the, the sleeve from um, where you stopped and started. And then from that point, you can flip your lining over. So if you've already sewn those together, you can flip your lining over. Actually, let's just go ahead and do that. Go ahead, now that you've done that, and finish sewing up your sleeve. So um, basically it's in the round now, but you're just gonna sew where you stopped and started at those two points under your arm. So I'm gonna do that really quickly. So now I have eliminated that hole. So now my sleeve is sewn in completely the way it normally would. So now, here's the two ways you can finish off the lining. So if we bring the lining back on top of it, you can do a stay stitch at 5 eighths of an inch all the way around your lining armhole and then clip into it about half of an inch um, apart all the way to the seam line and then you can fold that under. You gotta pull the sleeve out for this one. And I'm obviously on the wrong side. Pull that out and then you can hand sew your lining to that seam allowance um, all the way around the sleeve, which is a very nice look. And if I were using a real sheer fabric, that would be a beautiful finish on that. And there's probably a way that you can do this other one with a machine, or to do that with a machine, I'm just not sure. But if you stuff the sleeve back in, I'm basically just going to um, attach the lining to the um, bodice sleeve combo. And you can go around and baste it, which I'm going to, just to keep things from shifting. Um, so I'm gonna just basically sew the lining to the um, armhole within the seam allowance. So that way if you get any tucks and stuff over here at the top, it's not that big of a deal because it's in the seam allowance and it won't show. So I'm just gonna really quickly baste, so all the way around the armhole again, basting the lining to the dress. Okay, so now I've sewn the lining to the dress, the sleeves in there. Um, you know, there's the neckline. Everything's inside out right now. And then I'm just gonna go around and serge it. And it will look like this. So it's a very clean finish, but since the sleeve doesn't have a lining, I mean, this is just my preferred way to do it because it's quick and easy. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna go around this armhole with the serger and serge um, my seam allowance. Okay. So as you can see, I mean, that's all tucked in there nicely. It's nice and surged. I just find that to be a, a just a lovely finish, especially since, I mean, my fabric, you can't, I mean, it's not sheer or anything. Um, so yeah, that's just the way I finish off when I have a sleeve. It's very, it's much easier actually than the sleeveless one. Okay, so next step, we're gonna go ahead and hem our sleeves. And I'm going to do a narrow hem on that and I'm gonna pull you in front of the machine um, to show you how. And then after that, the only thing left to do today is just to um, uh, 
fuse some um, interfacing to the center back along the fashion fabric for the zipper um, just so that's nice and fused but we'll do that in a second so let me take you closer to the machine and I'll show you how I do my narrow hems okay so this is how I do my narrow hems this is exactly actually how we'll finish off the hem of the dress but here is my sleeve this is um, everything's right side out so I'm gonna be sewing inside the sleeve so obviously this is the wrong side but the right side is out so does that make sense hopefully that I'm sewing inside the curve so what I do, I always start at the underarm seam just in case things get a little wonky, but I'm just gonna finger press a quarter of an inch over. And yes, that's raw. And I am just gonna sew right in the middle of that. And as I go around, I'm just folding over with my fingers about a quarter of an inch. Okay, so after you've done that pass, obviously this is a raw edge right here because we just literally folded it over. Untwist everything. <laughs> but we're going to start in the same spot, and now it folds over pretty nicely. So this time I'm going to sew really close to that fold. So I'm being more precise this time around. So I do have some straggling um, threads that are really just from the fabric fraying, which we can just kind of trim off. But as you can see, oopsie, on the, oh, I missed that. Okay, well I'm gonna have to unpick pick this little area and go back, I missed my um, fold. But as you can see, <laughs> where I don't miss the fold, um, you have your one line here where you have sewn um, the first stitch and then where you have sewn it down, but then on the right side it only has the um, the one line of stitching and Then I'll go press it. It's just a much quicker way to do your um, hems in my opinion so Yeah, there you go. I'm gonna go fix my boo-boo and then um, Yeah, then we can go um, press your sleeve hems and then I'm gonna talk about um, the last little bit for today. All right, so our bodice is finished for this week. We've got our sleeves in. Um, our neckline is all nice and done. Our bodice and our lining are completely free from each other at the bottom right now. In the back, we have our two in or you know two inches ish gap between our um, lining and our bodice. And I have gone ahead and fused um, interfacing to my center back seam on both sides. You're also gonna wanna do this to the center back seam of the skirt, just from the top of the skirt down to about an inch past where the zipper is supposed to stop. There's a notch there on the pattern. Um, and I'll show you the brand I use. So you can definitely cut your own interfacing, um, obviously strips. This is an inch and a quarter wide. I use this So Keezy Knit Stay Tape. Um, I always use this for my zippers. It's an inch and a quarter wide. Um, and I just buy the roll, then I don't have to worry about cutting my own. But yeah, that's what you wanna have done for this week. And then next week we will attach um, everything else with both dresses is the same from here on out. So next week we will go ahead and attach our skirt um, pockets and all that and then put in the zipper and finish everything up so your sleeve seams um, should be done and everything but yeah we've got a very cute summer dress forming up all right see you guys next week mm -hmm.